The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Tuesday morning, we have some CPI data, and boy, it's going to be an interesting one in the market, folks. I apologize for the late start. Right when I was coming on the air, man, my computer just froze up. Very difficult to do a show when your whole computer freezes up literally within about 15 seconds before we started. Appreciate my producer helping me out there. We restarted the computer. We're ready to go, and we have the NASDAQ folks pushing pre-market lows of more than 3% to the downside right now, and boy, when you jump over to that CPI number, man, it is a hot number, folks, and there is no reprieve just yet. We have a Federal Reserve meeting that begins one week from today, and you're talking about 75 basis points. They were talking about it in the den. You're going to hear about a potential for a 1% hike on that meeting. Not to say whether it happens. 75 is definitely happening. What happens at the next meeting as we go down the line? Inflation persisting in a big way. Consumer prices actually increasing when they were looking for a month-over-month -month decrease. Core came in at 06 for the month. It was supposed to come in at 0.3% for the month. If you were listening to the program yesterday, folks, I talked a lot about CPI, shelter, the lagging impact that shelter will have on CPI. Shelter is one third about of the overall CPI. Shelter pushes 40% of the core CPI. Shelter, especially rents, lag tremendously because people don't reset their leases on a very often basis. And what's gonna happen, folks? You're talking about a core number that's at 0.6%. We'll get into it a little bit later in the show. And you're talking about a number where some people are talking about next year, shelter rents are going to be pushing seven percent and by the end of 2024 rents are still going to be pushing 4.5 percent and that's going to be 40 percent of the core cpi the end of 2024 man i think the market is going to be freaked out by this number man because we are way off what they were thinking and we are just not stopping dropping right now pretty tremendous the drop off we have folks you were pushing 13,000 in the NASDAQ 100. We're approaching 12,400. You're off 3.06% right now. You jump over to the S&Ps, basically making pre-market session lows as I speak. Look at that slide. The first move was down about 100 points. Since then, we've dropped almost another full percent. The S&Ps now off 2.4%. How about the Dow? Off 1.9%. The Dow just gave up 900 points from where it was trading at pre-market, man. We got... 14 minutes to go until the opening bell. We're skipping this break because I came on a little bit late, man, but we got plenty to talk about this morning. How about crude? Volatility everywhere in this market, folks. You get the crude contract right now. You're down 75 cents, but you're off more than $2 from where you were trading at at 89.20 down to 87.05. Huge move in the dollar index, and that is going to impact about everything. And you got gold trading down to 17.07 right now. We got to jump to notes and bonds. We got the 10 year. There's a drop for you. Down 24 ticks right now in the 10-year. You're pushing 114.27. We got yields through the roof everywhere, man. You got the bonds, the 10-year, 3.45%. Seems like we might be on our way back to about 3.5%. And then where do we go? Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team... TD Ameritrade Network, and I think they might have something to talk about on a day like today, folks. Kevin Higgs, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, a little shock to the market this morning as inflation a little stickier than we thought, Tommy. Now, let's put this in a little bit of perspective. All we're going to do, remember, the market opened Friday morning at 4038 and a half. So, all we were really doing is giving so far, at least so far, we, we, we gave up Friday and Monday's rally. But, Tommy, this number is showing that inflation is stickier than normal. And even though, if you look at the tables, energy came down across the board. It was food, Tommy, that is really the, the, the stickiest part of this. Food at home, up seven tenths. Food away from home, up nine tenths. Tommy, and one last thing, 
if you look at the all items, less food and energy, used cars and trucks was down a tenth of a percent. Every other line was positive, Tommy. Yeah, it's a little intimidating, man. You make some great points, and that's kind of what has uh, at least the spikes on my back, man. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty attuned to the risk probabilities that that you know, if it doesn't happen in this meeting, Kevin, who's to say that by the next meeting it's going to happen? Because everybody was saying we should probably see something on this meeting. Uh, we all know how that can go, man. Pretty interesting. And you make a great point with the S and P's, though. I said uh, during my program at one point yesterday. I said, where do those 200 points come from? Kind of meaning from where we were at 3,900 last Wednesday, and we were coming at about 4,100. Uh, and so we were still, I mean, you're talking about trading at 4,032, folks. It was quite an incline from where we were even less than a week ago at a 3,800 price point on the S&Ps. But as they say, Kevin, the day is young, man. Yield spiking, crude pulling back in a big way. I guess the conversation obviously goes to what happens in the Fed meeting. Do you want to give us maybe what you think might happen? 75 seems like it's fully baked in. Do they even start talking about a percentage, Kevin, or a oh, full yeah. percentage? And then where do we go for the next meeting? It seems like 75. I think 75 is now 100 percent, Tommy. And now you're going to start seeing, as we sit here this morning, there's a 20 percent chance of a 1% increase, that number will increase, Tommy, especially as we get PPI, as we get consumer sentiment. Later in the week, watch for that 1% move by the Fed to start gaining traction. Doesn't mean he'll do that. I still think probably Jerome Powell will do 75, but now that number, that number that we're aiming for in terms of interest rates, that number may have just gone up. Why? Well, because since August 12th, uh, as we try to fight inflation, the government has spent another $1.1 trillion uh, in terms of um, you know the inflate the inflation recovery in, in, in you know the uh, le legislation against inflation and student loan forgiveness. There's another 1.1 trillion in spending. So inflation is sticky, Tommy. And Jerome Powell has got one tool that he can use, and he's going to use it. I, it's 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 pretty interesting, man. What's going to come down the line as we approach even even their next meeting? Uh, we have, of course, yield surging. I mean, what what do you think? Even when you look across the globe, man. You know, I, I was searching Bloomberg early this morning. I heard one analyst say, "I instantly thought, oh man, that's tough for the U.S." And then I said, "Man, that's doubly tough for the rest of the world because yeah, the U.S. is going to be hiking, and we got the dollar index jumping basically two full points right out of the bat. Uh, it just gets tougher, man. Maybe for Europe and, and their quest, right?" Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone pivots and is related to the U.S. markets. So the fact that inflation is sticky here with everything we're doing to fight it, that means Europe's probably going to be. So this is a situation with high inflation, Tommy, that's going to linger in these markets. And, you know, in, uh, Europe has already talked about their numbers uh, being much higher than ours now. Here's one bit, bit of good news, Tommy. The month-over-month -month inflation number was still lower than last month, right? It was 8.5. It's down to 8.3. It missed expectations, and that, what the, what, that is what the market trades off of right now. But peak inflation, you can still make a discussion for that. But the core, the core is what is, is remaining stubborn on the upside, I mean, you know, I tried to. I talked yesterday during the program, Kevin, um, about the shelter part of things, and I've gotten quite an education along with many people about how important shelter is to the CPI. I was reading that it's about one third of the headline number, and when you get to the core side, it's as much as forty percent of the core, almost forty percent of the core inflation number. And then you talk about the lag impact of rents, and it makes sense, right? People are not signing leases on a constant basis, where those kind of mark to market is getting done. Uh, they have to play catch up with the market rates. Uh, does that go into your mentality? Because that is, I think, a big worry point, in my opinion, in terms of where do we get core when some of the numbers I was looking at, they were saying, you know, you could still see rents rising four to five percent in 2024 just because of the lag of a year or two where you have a tenant in there. You don't reset the rent. They leave and then you jack it up to meet market rates. Yeah, shelter right now, this month, up 0.7, Tommy. It was one of the stronger um, lines in the ex-food and energy. And now for the year, for the last 12 months, shelter up 6.2%. So, again, 
a, a strong number. Shelter uh, shelter affects everyone. And you're right, Tommy. You don't sign a weekly or monthly lease. You sign it for either six months or a year. So, yeah, that's not, that's a number that's probably going to be sticky as well. So shelter up 0.7 and up 6.2 year over year. Big numbers, man. I, it's it's as as a as a trader, you know, uh, looking at this market, uh, I'm excited, man. You know, I want the market not to just get destroyed. But, folks, volatility, man, you know, looking at it. And what are we looking at this morning? I haven't even jumped over recently to the VIX as we hit uh, 25. That seems pretty, pretty relatively low, in my opinion, right now with what's going on and where this thing has been just for the better part of this year. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about coming up at 12 o'clock today? Beyond the obvious. Go for it, man. We're going to look at a recession-proof trade today, which is we're going to look at Visa. Uh, today is the Starbucks Investor Day, so like Foley is going to do presentation on Starbucks. And then we'll look at Costco in our third segment, where you might go, what you might use when a re it, it, when and if a recession hits. So, uh, I like it, man. Visa, Starbucks, Costco. Visa, Starbucks, Costco, and folks, you should be thinking like that because it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but at least have the mentality to be prepared for the scenarios that can play out. And it's a dicey scenario with some of these numbers right now, and uh, they're running pretty hot, and we're pretty decent into the hiking cycle, and nothing has really changed to, to a nominal, uh, pretty small degree, at least in my opinion. Kevin, we appreciate you taking the time out on a busy morning, man, and we look forward to watching the show at 12 o'clock today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, man. Folks, check it out. 12 o'clock today. You heard it. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking for stocks and it's going to be interesting, man. You got yields for the first time really having an impact. You're talking about the 10 year pushing 3.5 percent. There is competition when it comes to equities. Uh, and one of the things you're going to see, folks, is people going to equities that provide a little bit of safety in a potentially pretty volatile period of time that we're coming up on, man. You're still sitting above 4,000 in the S&Ps, folks. You know, that's about 10% above where we were trading at in June, all right? Things have played out pretty poorly in terms of where the market is and where inflation is, even from what we were thinking that was going to play out. I mean, do you remember what we were thinking in May or June? They weren't thinking, folks, that CPI was still going to be pushing above 8% come September, okay? That was not the analysis. You back it up. I mean, we came into this report at basically we were retrading at in February, I'd say that things have gone much worse than that period of time. Now, you had, you know, huge energy shocks to the market, of course, in March and in February. But inflation is much more persistent right now than the Fed thought it was going to be. That's been the story for the better part of a year and a half. And who's to say it's going to change? So make sure you're protected. Maybe check out the program. Uh, I'm going to try and check it out. Visa, Costco. Uh, two great companies in there. Uh, what was the third one? Had? Starbucks, which is a great company as well. Starbucks, a little bit more exposure to China when you talk about Starbucks. They were quick to fall off during the pandemic. You back things up, you actually see that they started falling off before the rest of the globe because they were so open to the business in China. So they have a little bit more exposure over there, and China's got some problems, man. So Starbucks. They're going to open down two bucks. Everything's opening down today, folks. We'll come back for the opening bell in three minutes. Stay tuned. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking world-class gold project in the tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps kicking things off down 2.2%, trading at 4,038. You basically give up 135 S&P points just like that from the highs. Now, we came into that print higher. We came into that print higher by about 30 S&P points. So you're off 2.2%. But this market just dropped about 3%, even in the S&P from where we were. I'm not sure it had every right to be pushing 4,200, folks, with everything on the line. It's a big miss. But... I think it was overly optimistic to think this number was going to come in as soft as many had thought, considering the impacts of what's going on and the fact that the numbers have not come down yet to any considerable degree. Has to be what Chairman Powell is sitting there thinking right now. You got the NASDAQ 100 down 500 points from where it was trading at. What is that pushing? Yeah, that's pushing a full 4% because you had the markets dramatically higher. So, you know. Coming from that, you have the NASDAQ 100 off 2.6%, but you're off almost 4% from the spike high you got right on that print at 830. Big numbers across the board, man. Crude, catching a little bit of a bounce, actually, back to 88.19. So much for hitting 81, man. That was a heck of a buy. You're up to 89 bucks. Crude, not trading dramatically lower just yet. And yeah, we'll jump around to some currencies real quick. You get the gold contract getting crushed, man. That's going to happen anytime you got this type of move in the dollar index folks because the dollar index just spiked what a point and a half from where we we're trading at from 107.75 to 109.32 now kevin mentioned it you know we've only given back the gain that we had basically from friday right all we've done is trade back to where we were at 10 o'clock on friday remember where we were at 10 o'clock on friday if you said to yourself on friday hey guess what this is going to be the cpi number on tuesday Here's where we're trading at Friday at 10 in the morning. Do you think the market is going to be higher than that or lower than that after we get the CPI print, right? You would say lower. Well, we're, we're basically higher depending on where you pick the opening on Friday. Not sure that should be where we sit, even if we trade it to 41.75, okay? All right, let's jump around to some of the other articles. We'll see where the market sorts out. We're only two minutes into the trading day, folks. It's going to be a wild one. There's going to be moves in both directions for sure. You know what, before we do, let's jump around to those currencies, though, because you got the euro, U.S. dollar. We were pushing almost 102, right back to parity right now. Dollar, yen, okay? Look at that move. Now, I don't know if that's, I don't, I don't think that was probably real, as in to 137, 
Let's put it on a one minute. You'll probably be able to see. Yeah, not really a real tick, I think. Down to 137. But nonetheless, the yen was at 142. And you just traded up to 144 and a half almost on the yen. You put that thing on a daily, right? Yeah, you're right back to highs, man. The trend is intact. Now take that tail out of there because that doesn't exist. Huge numbers, man. Jumping around to some of those CPI numbers. So Kevin talked about it, man. We all talk about it. Food. Food costs increased 11.4% from a year ago, the most since 1979. Electricity, 15.8%, the most since 1981. Gas falling 10.6%. Shelter costs, Kevin Higgs talked about it, increasing 0.7% from July, 6.2% from a year ago, both the most since the early 1990s. Folks, shelter lags. Shelter lags, and we're pushing 0.7%, the most since the 90s. Annualized, what is that, 8.4% shelter is rising. Shelter is rising at 8.4% a year. It lags and will probably be persistent over the next two years. And you're at 8.4% right now. It's already the most since the early 1990s. And you're at 8.4% annualized. And that has a 40% impact on the core CPI. I'm glad I talked about what I did yesterday. If you missed the program, folks, yesterday, feel free to check it out on our YouTube page because I talked a lot about shelter, CPI, core CPI, some of the numbers they're looking for. One analyst I was reading talked about next year, I think they're looking for something like 7.5% shelter. Right now, annualized, it's at 8.4%. So that would be waning a bit if next year you have shelter rising at about 7 to 7.5%. And they're looking for 4.5% as of the end of 2024. If that's the case, man, core CPI is not going back down to two and two and a half percent by the end of 2024. And if that's the case, then where's the market and where's the Fed? That's, I don't have the answer to that one, man, but it's a dicey question in terms of where we end up. Uh, big numbers across the board there. All right, what else do I have here? Uh, this article from Bloomberg. So U.S. falls to 18th place in global retirement ranking. Inflation, market volatility, and an aging population makes 2022 one of the worst years to retire. I mean, folks, unfortunately, it gets political when you go through all this stuff. Uh, the U.S., though, they are number 18 on the rankings. you got Norway, Switzerland, and Iceland, good old Ireland, number four, top on the list in terms of retirement security. One number I want to go over here. Uh, they talk about Social Security, okay? The U.S. relies on a balance between the number of younger workers. We all know this, but check out the actual statistics if you don't. Paying into the system and the retiree population drawing benefits, but the older population is swelling and skewing the balance. Again, we all know that, I think, but guess what, man? Check out these numbers. People over 65 made up about 14% of the population in the year 1950, the year my dad was born. 28.4% in the year 2020, okay? And 40.4% by the year 2050. Those numbers present a problem to the social security system. And hopefully our politicians can come together and have a little compromise because that's what it takes to get things done when you differ in opinions, folks, coming towards somewhere near the middle, okay? Uh, because that is a broken system. And the only people that are going to get hurt are the people who are younger that really didn't even factor into making the decisions that set up that system. Doesn't seem fair at all. Uh, but nonetheless, big numbers. They got to get that one under control. We jump over to the world of gambling and football. Why not? Monday Night Football, great game last night. Didn't catch the end of it. But you had Russell Wilson signed a huge contract with Denver in the offseason. He comes into Seattle, his former team. Uh, they lose 16-7. to Denver coaching, suspect from what I was watching early on. Couldn't get plays in there on time. Um, yeah, some tough deals going on there. But Russell Wilson played tremendously well. Great game. Great first week of football action. And this Thursday, I've talked about it, Amazon, they kick off Thursday night football Football exclusively. It's offered nowhere else. It's the first time you're going to have NFL live football exclusively on a streaming service. So Amazon's going to kick it off. And DraftKings is going to be the exclusive odds provider. Now, Everything is still dropping in this market. So DraftKings is going to get really hammered today when you have yields doing what they're doing. And they are a growth company, to say the least. But you were positive, man. You were up to 1859, the pre-market. This thing just traded from 15 to 1850. Okay, now you're back to 1716. This is going to trade with some volatility. We get the S&Ps off 100 points, man. You get the NASDAQ 100. We're pushing lows right now. 
NASDAQ 100 off 3.2% right now, and the s and is off 2.4%. Now, what's interesting here, though, is how the world is going to change, man, and wrap your brains around it, because it's pretty interesting to see how this is going to absolutely change how we watch live sports. Uh, if you're not a fan of gambling, sorry to break it for you, man, but it is going to dominate live sports. DraftKings, okay, so here's what's going to happen. Uh, they said Tuesday that it signed a multi-year agreement with Amazon that includes same-game parlays. Same-game parlays. I'm going to explain that if you don't understand that in a moment. That will be available on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Content from DraftKings will be featured in all 15 of Amazon's NFL telecasts this season. That kicks off this Thursday, beginning September 15th. Financial terms not disclosed. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more, man, because that is going to change things. And if you're familiar with how things work in Europe, man, Europe, they love gambling on sports. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps down about 90 points right now. You're catching a little bit of a bounce off the lows. You were pushing about 100 points. Uh, there is no strength in that bar, though. We're looking at 15-minute bars. Let's put it to a one-minute just to see the drop-off since 830. You know, yeah, you got you got a, you got a rise uh, to the tune of 12 S&P points, folks, but we just dropped 140 six s p points 146 yeah that's more than four percent from that spike we had to the upside all right if you head on over to the front page of tfnn folks i encourage you if you have not yet to check out the tiger's den trading room 
Okay, right here on the front page of TFNN, it's a dollar for the whole year. You simply sign up. We use the Discord app. Now you can use that on your desktop. You can use that on your mobile. I've been, it's on days like this in particular. Okay, there is a tremendous amount of great conversation. They're throwing in trades in there. They're doing a ton of stuff, uh, and we have our first contest in there. So, for those that already made their guesses, probably a little difficult ahead of time. But you can join the Tigers Den, and when you do, uh, we're doing a little contest, and we're going to start doing more of these, all right, giving away some merchandise that we have going on. So this contest is you got to guess the SPX close as of Friday, September 16th, okay, this Friday. You have to guess it by 4 p.m. tomorrow, okay? They're locked in. Uh, all you have to do is comment in the chat. If you're in the Tiger's Den right now, you will see on the left side there under Text Channels Tiger Contests. Head on over there. You can guess where you think the SPX is going to close as of Friday. You have until 4 o'clock tomorrow, but don't wait, folks, because we got to shut it off at one point. 4 o'clock is the hard deadline. Uh, the top three get a special TFNN coffee mug. So we got some coffee mugs in there. And to give a quick little glimpse of those coffee mugs, I'll pull them up right here real quick. There is the beautiful Tiger on one side uh, with that beautiful backdrop of a tiger we have in our office right there. And then on the other side, you have TFNN.com, Educating Investors. So, you know, a small contest, a few mugs. The den is worth its value, folks, because it's basically free. We just do a dollar to keep um, spam accounts basically out of there as a way to regulate that it's an actual real person uh, and not maybe somebody causing trouble, right, or just spamming or doing whatever. And there is some great conversation, folks. And in markets like this, boy, they're talking pre-market all morning about their trades, what's going on. They're talking after market, but during market hours especially, very active in there. we got like almost 500 people in there, a uh, few hundred people in there at any time, talking live, chatting their charts, uh, et cetera. So check it out and exciting. We'll be giving away a few mugs. If you're in the den, don't forget to guess. Go put a guess in there, man. Where are we going? Well, we're not going to be above 41.75. I'm not going to get a mug for telling you that, but we're not going to be above 41.75 as of the close of Friday, folks. That's my opinion. Doesn't mean it's going to be true. This market can defy anybody. But boy, with that number coming out, folks, I would say we're probably even going to finish below where we're at right now if I had to make a guess on that number. We'll find out. Okay, let's jump around to some of the articles I have pulled up here. Kevin Hinks talked about it. They'll be talking about Starbucks, one of the talk stocks that they'll be talking about at 12 o'clock today on Fast Market, and that is because they have invest Investor Day going on. So you got a reinvention strategy is what they'll be talking about. The strategy uh, is the brainchild of the outgoing interim CEO, Howard Schultz. He's been like so instrumental. He's, he's what's that, his third stint there, started the company, didn't actually technically start the Starbucks company, but brought it from uh, essentially a nothing coffee chain to what it is today. Came back as CEO. Now he's back again as interim CEO. Seems like they got to get their deal together with the succession line going on at Starbucks. We jump over to SBUX. They're down 2.7% to kick things off. Let's see uh, how some of the FANG stocks are trading. Amazon, whew, growth stock's getting hurt, man. Amazon down 4.6%. Now, this thing has had quite a rise recently. We put this thing back on a daily, you know, and you're still well off where we were trading at just a week ago, which was 124, let alone you go back to their last earnings about six weeks ago. You were at about 116 to 120 area on Amazon. The lows of about 106, but you were as high as 145. But boy, they're getting punished today, down 4.6% today. And Microsoft down more than 3%. The big dog, Apple, down 2.6%, we'll call it, to 159.30 for Apple shares. Let's see how Google's trading off 3.6. Big numbers, man. Meta off 6%. Twitter has its own saga going on, of course, off 1.3%. Let's see how some of those growth stocks are trading. Look at this, man. Zoom. Zoom is pushing basically lows of any time recently as this market goes back to test. The lows we have, Zoom off 5.9% right now. Let's see how Tesla's trading off 3%. ARC with their growth stocks down 5.9%. Man, we jump over to the 10-year. And we are right bumping into this low, man. Look at this pullback we had from August, right? We were pushing, what, 121.24? What's the high there? No, 122. We got a 122 handle, and now we're at a 114 handle in the in six-week span. And we are pushing, I'm sure, 3.5%, something like that. Let's see where we're trading at right now. We got a yield right now in the 10-year of 3.43% uh, on the 10-year. All right, let's see what else I had pulled up in terms of articles talking about. Yeah, you go from uh, 
Succession, HBO, and Ted Lasso. If you haven't checked out Ted Lasso, folks, outstanding series. A comedy, but uh, great series in many ways. Ted Lasso, Succession, that is also a great series uh, for HBO. They have a lot of good stuff up there. I, I am a subscriber to HBO right now. And actually, if you're a subscriber, give me a hint. What you should do is what I just did is I canceled on my monthly and they got a 40% off promotion going on for HBO. So if you're on a monthly paying for HBO right now, you can cancel, right? Make sure you check this. It's probably on their website. Maybe I'll pull it up at the break to make sure what the deadline is. But you cancel on your monthly. Maybe you're paying. It's expensive. HBO, one of the more expensive services, $14.99 a month maybe. And then they are offering 40% off for the year is what it is, 40% off for the year. So instead of paying 149 for the year, they give you 40% off, kicks it back down to like 110 or something like that. So you're, you're paying 110 for the whole year instead of paying 1499 for a month. There's there's some a profitable trade for you uh, for HBO. But they come in, uh, 24 award, awards, right? Yeah, 20. No, 24 awards was what they gave out. I see HBO had 11 of them, primetime Emmys, including Outstanding Drama for Succession, and uh, Disney and Apple were second. But yeah, HBO getting it done. All right, what else we got? Twitter has its own saga with the whistleblower going on. Yeah, and we talked about the retirement. All right, let's jump around to some of the currencies and see what levels we're pushing. Because I was talking about the currencies, whether it's the Euro US dollar, pound US dollar, now, folks, all we did was bump right up to that upper boundary line. I mean, look at this. We've been talking about these channels, right? Boom, you bump up to 102. You're back to parity, basically sitting at one. You overtrade to the bottom part of that, man. We'll be talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat, tomorrow, as we always do at 40 past the hour. But, boy, you push the lower boundary line. And many times, folks, we've been bouncing around on this channel line. All we're doing is pushing the upper boundary line. Even if you trade back down to just the bottom portion of this channel, you're talking about maybe 95, excuse me, 94 on that euro US dollar. Now the pound's a little bit different. You jump over to the pound US dollar. And you're nowhere near the top of what you could call a channel line. Not exactly parallel lines. Maybe this one uh, rests a little bit lower. You could say even, right? That might be a, a better linear regression fit going back to at least end of February. Lines it up a little bit more parallel. But interesting to see if there'll be some divergences here with the pound US dollar, where the pound, if it trades lower, you may be talking about 114, but you do have room to the upside there for the pound to its channel line. But your US dollar, man, they are in trouble in a big way on that channel. And we'll finish it. We'll talk about the yen. When we come back, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for one more segment. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now down about 89 points, 4,039. You take a look at the daily, okay? All we did, folks, is bounce to the 618. Man, this is a daily. You trade down from about 43, what, 27? Yeah, 43.27 down to the recent lows we had, which were 38.83. What do you do? You pop to the 618. You pop right where this thing chopped around for a bit towards the middle to late August. And then what do we do? We turn around. And if that's an A to B, C to D, folks, okay? You're talking about from 43.27 down to 38.86. So what is that? About 440 points or so. Yeah, 440 points or so. And then you take that off this number. You're talking about, what, 3,700 in the S&Ps. Maybe you're talking about the recent lows we had in July, which would bring us right in. Now, I'm going to back that up a little bit more to see. Yeah, you're talking about right back where we were. Doesn't necessarily bring us down to 46.39, but yeah, you're talking about about, let's get it exactly, 43.27 plus 86. Yeah, 440 points, 441, something like that, and you're coming off a high, let's put it on a 15 minute, even pre-market. Well, if you take off that and you put it back on a daily, you're coming off a high of 41.75, so yeah, 37.30, something like that, and 37.23 is the low from July 14th. Uh, maybe that'll be my uh, guess for the SPX in the trading contest. No, I'm not going to guess in there, folks. I already have a mug. I should have it right here, drinking out of it. I drink out of it all the time. Uh, my beautiful TFNN mug. Check out the Tiger Stand if you haven't, folks. For those of you in there, thanks so much for making it such a great place every day. I was in there this morning, even though I wasn't posting a lot, watching what everybody was talking about on that CPI. It was a great discussion, man. Uh, Kevin said, we're at 20% already for one full percentage point when the Fed meets a week from today. Folks, the meeting starts a week from today. And then they have their announcement Wednesday at 2 o'clock press conference to follow. September 20th and 21st is their meeting decision on the 21st. We got a lot of trading until then. Yeah, markets basically making lows as I get off the air. Stay tuned, folks. We got live programming all day. Basil's up next. Steve Rhodes, our man at 11. We got Fast Market at 12. Larry Pesavento at 1. Dave White at 2. Tom O'Brien, live from 3 till 4. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.